The Very Busy Spider by Eric Carle. The Very Busy Spider. Early one morning, the wind blew a spider across the field. A thin, silky thread trailed from her body. The spider landed on a fence post near a farmyard. and began to spin a web with her silky thread. Nay, nay, said the horse. Want to go for a ride? The spider didn't answer. She was very busy spinning her web. Moo, moo, said the cow. Want to eat some grass? Spider didn't answer. She was very busy spinning her web. Bat, bat, bleated the sheep. Want to run in the meadow? The spider didn't answer. She was very busy spinning her web. Ma, ma, said the goat. Want to jump on the rocks? The spider didn't answer. She was very busy spinning her web. Oink, oink, grunted the pig. Want to roll in the mud? The spider didn't answer. She was very busy spinning her web. Woof, woof, barked the dog. Want to chase a cat? Spider didn't answer. She was very busy spinning her web. Meow, meow, cried the cat. Want to take a nap? The spider didn't answer. She was very busy spinning her web. Quack, quack, called the duck. Want to go for a swim? The spider didn't answer. She had now finished her web. cock a doo doo crowed the rooster. Want to catch a pesky fly? And the spider caught the fly in her web just like that. Who, who, asked the owl. Who built this beautiful web? The spider didn't answer. She had fallen asleep. It had been a very, very busy day. The end. Okay, here are a couple of Eric Carle inspired art ideas working with paint and scrapers on paper to give it texture. Here I'm starting with some warm colors. It's just different shades of red. And as you can see, I'm just squeezing it out and then putting it on the paper. And then this time I just brushed it along the paper and trying to cover as much of the white space as possible. Eric Carl will use tissue paper. I'm using a little bit harder paper to make it easier to scrape. And then here I'm adding some yellow to add more warm colors. And here are the scrapers. And so this kind of gives it its texture when I scrape it. Um, you can also make scrapers just out of cardboard and just cut little notches out of it. Make some of them wider and some of them closer together to look kind of like a comb. Uh, maybe you have an old comb, you could use that too. And as you can see, this is what it looks like when it dries. Here I'm going to do some cool colors. So I had some different shades of blue that I squeezed out on the paper and then some kind of a turquoise type of blue and then used a flat scraper. So you could just use a flat piece of cardboard even to do this kind of scraping. You can see how it blends together. This is acrylic paint. And then just sometimes I go over it with other colors and then as I was doing this I was inspired by the scrapers to make the shape of water.
there. I didn't really have a picture in mind when I started. Um, I just started to play with colors. As I started to think of ideas, I decided to make green for grass. So here you can look at it up close to see what the texture ended up looking like. And here's the green straighter lines. Since I started thinking of colors that had to do with the water and had to do with the grass, I thought I wanted to make a sky. So I played with a lighter blue and a white and just scraped it with a flat scraper. And up close, this is what it looked like. I had a lot of different gold colored acrylic paints and kind of a cream colored paint and so I just decided to kind of think about what the sand might look like and how I could scrape these colors together to maybe make some sand that looks like it's glistening in the sun. And then I scrape it all together just to see what different textures I can come up with. I didn't like the wide ones so I got one that was a little bit more narrow and the lines are closer together like a comb. And this is what the gold and cream look like scraped together close up. This is a good time to stand back and look at your art. Look at the colors and see what you imagine. If no images come to mind, then just start cutting the pieces of paper into different shapes. For me, I started seeing a landscape, so I decided to cut them into strips. First the sand, and then I began to cut out the water. And then I didn't really have a vision for the green. As you can see, I just tucked one paper into another and overlapped some so that they would kind of blend together. And the last layer was the sky. I ended up not even using the green paper, so I just glued on each layer one at a time. Here I have a spray glue, but whatever kind of glue you have at home, you can try out. And then there was the red paper, so I had to look at it and really think about what I wanted to cut out of it to put in my little ocean scene. I decided on a sea creature that could kind of be a part of the sand and the water, and I drew it on the back of the paper, which was white because it was easier to see. This made it easier to cut out, so I could just cut right around the edges to have the shape of the crab that I ended up deciding to use in my scene. And then I used just a little bit of black paint, just put it at the tip of my small paintbrush just to make some eyes. And up close, you can see all the different textures blended together. And if you look at Eric Carle's illustrations, you'll notice the different designs from the collaging he has done. In the actual book of The Very Busy Spider, you can actually feel the spider web texture. The line is like a bump that goes across the page. If you don't want to make an animal or a scenery, you can just play with the different shapes. Here I took the extra pieces, um, scraps of paper, and this is where I was able to even cut up the green pieces of paper that I didn't use in my scene. And I just cut them up into different shapes, into squares and rectangles, strips and um, squares. And then I just placed it on the paper to see what it might look like before even gluing it on, just to see what kind of designs I'd want. And I always take a moment to stand back and see what I like and what I might need to move. And then I glued it down with a Mod Podge glue so that I could glue on top of it too. And maybe that's your finished work or maybe you want to add an image on top of it. Our kindergarten class explored shadows so I decided to cut out the shapes of animals as a shadow and um, Anna's silhouette to glue on top of my design and that's it. And those are some ideas to illustrate your books inspired by Eric Carle.